Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone. Okay, so I think we're gonna do one more share. Oh, see, Marsha, I saw you and I remembered to turn on my recorder. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have forgotten again. Okay, so we're gonna do one more share here on Perichov Gimel, even though I think I could say share on Perichov Gimel for another several weeks, but we have to go further as well. Um, the the shir, the learning should be as chus for Rafu Shalema, for Yitzchak ben Chana Rachel, Mendel Shmuel ben Miriam Leia, um, Menachem Arye ben Dina Yehudis, Yisrael Menachem ben Ita Ginendel. Um, and there's one name that I'm forgetting. Hold on one second. One name that I'm missing. <laughs> Uh, Marsha, if you could if you could hear me over there, I, I I'm not finding Rebison Kamenetsky's name. Tema Bas Ch China Razel. Tema. Yeah, Tema Bas. Tema Bas China Razel. China Razel. They should all have a refuah shalema. Okay, so we said share last week predominantly on pasuk gimel. So now if we go to pasuk dalid. David HaMelech says, Gam ki eilech begei tzalmoves. Even if I'm traveling, begei tzalmoves, a gay is a valley, or like uh, the Mepharshim say, I think the Betsuda says over here, be'emek ofel, the depths of a dark valley. And the Betsuda says, Ritzayin Eloimar, what David HaMelech means to say is, b'mokim sakona, in a place of danger. But I think specifically for us, if you take a look in the Evan Ezra, the Evan Ezra says, Vatam Moves, when he says Begay Tsal Moves, the word Tsal Moves is a contraction of two words, sail, or shadow, and Moves is death. The Evan Ezra says, We're talking about Moves, Sheinenu Kiderecha Tolados, things that are not. In the normal order of things, Kimai, for example, may say Milchama Umagefa, at a time when people are Nebuch dying either from, uh, from war, Milchama, or from Magefa, from some kind of a plague. So, a gate Salmavis, Gan Kielech Begate Salmavis, even if I'm going, if I'm traveling in the shadow of death, a Makam Sakana, or a time of Sakana with his fear, and people are plagued by fear, and stress, and worry, and anxiety. Says David HaMelech, Lo ira ra. I will not fear any ra. Why? I will not feel fear that any evil will perform, will perform me. Ki ata imadi. Because David HaMelech says to the Rabbani Shalom, I know that you are with me. What does that mean? David HaMelech means, I know that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is with me. I know that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is the one who charts the course of every second of my life. I know that I'm completely in the hands of the Rabbi Nishalaylam and that the Rabbi Nishalaylam always has my best interests in mind and he's taking care of me. And therefore, like you are up, I have no fear. I, I do the things that I'm supposed to do. I take the course of action that's appropriate for me to take. I make the ishtadlus that I'm supposed to make. I do the things I'm supposed to do to protect myself. But at the same time, I'm not fearful. I don't have fear. I don't have anxiety. Because you are with me. Now, at the same time, doesn't necessarily mean the, that I, I, it doesn't necessarily mean I have no fear because I'm absolutely certain that no, no harm will befall, will befall me, doesn't mean that. What it means can be seen from the rest of the Pasuk. Shiftecha umishantecha. Shiftecha is a shevet, is a, is a rod, a stick. Shiftecha, your rod, umishantecha, and your staff. A staff is like a walking stick, something that you use for a support. Heima yenachamuni. They will always 
Yenachamuni, the word Yenachamuni is they will console me, they will give me rest. Hey, Yenachamuni, I don't have to worry. Shiftecha umishantecha. What shiftecha umishantecha? Two different types of rods, two different types of sticks. So there's a very nice malbum over here. The malbum says that the shepherd has a shevet and he has a mashenes. The malbum says that the two of them, he says that the, the, the shevet, the way, the way the malbum puts it is the shevet, I think is a small, a small stick. Shiftecha umishantecha. Yeah, ha'ach shevet katan, a small stick, bo yake es haseh, that the shepherd uses to hit the, the sheep, la toisai el derech hanachayna, to make the sheep go in the proper path. The shepherd sometimes has to use a rod as a guide. He has to tap the sheep and let the sheep know that he's going the wrong way. He's got to turn the sheep to a different way. So sometimes the shepherd has a staff, but it's a small one. It's a shaved cotton. It's a lightweight stick. He's not trying to hurt the sheep. He's trying to tap the sheep to let the sheep know you're going the wrong way and put him back on the, on the proper course. And then there's a, mishan, a mishanis. The Malbum says that the mishanis, that's the shepherd's staff, that big uh, hooked staff that you always see pictures of. He says that the, the Mishenes is biyadai, is in the hand of the shepherd, that's what he uses if wolves come. That's the stick that he uses to beat the wolf and to chase the wolf away. So David Amalek says, the reason I'm not afraid is because I understand that you have a shevet, and I understand that from time to time you might use the shevet, you might strike me with the shevet, but when you hit me with the rod, I understand that the reason you're doing it, I understand that the reason you're doing it, the reason you're hitting me, is not because you want to hurt me. It's not because chas v'chalil, you want to harm me. You're doing it because you're pushing me back onto the derech nechayna. You're making an adjustment. You're trying to move me in the proper course. And I also know that you have a mishenes. I know that you have a stick that you'll use always to protect me, and you'll use it to strike my enemies. Over there, it's a big stick. Over there, it's something that you're gonna to use to strike my enemies. So to wrap up what David HaMelech is saying in this Pasuk, David HaMelech is saying that sometimes there is a gate, Salmavis. Sometimes I am in a Mokum Sakana. Sometimes I'm in danger. Sometimes it's a time when people are never dying from Mulchama, from war, or from Magefa. And it's a time when people are fearful and people are full of anxiety. But David HaMelech says, not me. Loi ira ra. He doesn't say that there is no ra. He doesn't say that it's not, uh, what's the, the, the word, uh, uh, Pollyanna. You know, it's not, it, he's not saying that, no, I have my head in the sand. There is no ra. There is no magefa. There is no problem. No, there is ra. He understands. It is a makam sakana. I am Eilech Begate Salmavis, but I don't have fear. I'm not struck down by fear. I'm not paralyzed by fear and anxiety. Why? Ki ata imadi. Because I recognize that at all times you, the Rabbani Shalom, are with me, and I understand that even if I feel a shevet, even if I feel that you're tapping me with a rod, I understand that you're doing it to push me to the derech hanachayna, I understand, let's say in a time like now, that what the Rabbi Nishalaylam is doing is the Rabbi Nishalaylam, somebody said to me, why do we deserve this punishment? I said, I don't choose to look at it that way. I don't choose to look at it as why do we deserve this punishment? I look at it in, rather in terms of the Rabbi Nishalaylam is trying to bring the Geula Shlema. The Rabbi Nishalaylam wants to finally bring the Geula and you're not gonna get a Geula from things just staying the way they are. If, if everything stays the way it is, so then why should anything change? If everything stays static, so then if there's no growth, then why should Mashiach come now if he didn't come last week? Elamai, there has to be a growth. 
Growth means change. There has to be change. And people sometimes need to be pushed to change. So the Rabbi Nusholelem is saying change. And the Rabbi Nusholelem is saying, I don't want things the way they've been until now. I do want change. I want change in the shuls. I want change in the yeshivas. I personally think the Rabbi Nusholelem is saying, I want change in the chasimus. I want change in the bar mitzvahs. There are those that might disagree with me. Apparently there are those who disagree with me. We can all agree that the Rabbi Nusholelem says, I want change. That's the shevet. You're going in the wrong path. I need to tap you. I need to move you over onto the Derech HaNechayna. But that's not something that I have to be afraid of. It's not a fear. We're working together. And I also know that you have a Mishenis. People are worried that people who have a history of, of having animosity towards us are maybe coming into power. People are fearful, they have anxiety. The Rabbanu Shalom has a Mishenis. The Rabbanu Shalom has a big stick. If the Rabbanu Shalom needs to use a big stick against enemies of ours, the Rabbanu Shalom has that stick ready to be deployed. So if he has to use it, he'll use it. Hey, Mayinachamuni. And these are things, Davin Amelov says, that console us. That's a simple, a rather simple understanding of the puzzle. There are three words in the Pasuk that I would like to spend a little more time on. And I think they're the three key words in the Pasuk. Ki ata imadi, because you are with me. Somebody says, ki ata imadi, he understands that the Rabbani Shalalam is with him. You know, is it so simple for every person to say, Loi irara, I don't fear evil, ki ata imadi, because the Rabbani Shalalam is with me? The statement, ki ata imadi, you know, I always remember, those of you who, who live in Edison may remember that when I lived in Edison and we made bar mitzvahs, we made bar mitzvahs in our backyard in a tent. Those were beautiful bar mitzvahs. We put up a tent in the backyard. We davened in the tent all Shabbos. We ate the sudas in the tent. So somebody asked me, Mir Hashem, when you're ready to make a chasana, are you going to make a chasana in the backyard in the tent? So I said, hey, I'm ready. But the difference between a chasana and a bar mitzvah is that by a bar mitzvah, there's only one side. By a bar mitzvah, it's up to me what to do. By a chasana, there's two sides. So there's two parties that have to be agreeable to the idea. So I can't say that that's what I'm going to do. The statement, ki ata imadi, that takes two. There are two sides to that equation. It's very nice. A person will say, I'm going to work on my amuna and betachen, and I'm going to have amuna and betachen that the rabbi Nishalaylam is with me. Ki ata imadi. Okay, very nice. You're ready that the Rabbi Nishalaylam should be with you. Is the Rabbi Nishalaylam ready to be with you? You want to be with the Rabbi Nishalaylam. Does the Rabbi Nishalaylam want to be with you? Sometimes you want to be with the Rabbi Nishalaylam. You want to be Zaycha to this Pasuk. You want to say, Listen, it sounds like a very nice thing. I don't want to have any fear. I don't want to have any anxiety. So I'll, I'll learn... Um, and I'll work on my Amun and Betachen, and I'm ready to trust that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is with me. But are you a person that the Rabbi Nishalaylam wants to be with? You can't pick and choose when the Rabbi Nishalaylam should be with you. You can't say, I'm not going to be fearful of a virus because the Rabbi Nishalaylam is with me and the Rabbi Nishalaylam will protect me. But then, when there's a juicy piece of Lashon Hara to say, I'm going to go say the Lashon Hara. Well, if you're going to say the, the Lashon Hara when the Rabbi Nishon told you not to, so who says the Rabbi Nishon wants to be with you? You want to be with the Rabbi Nishon. Does he want to be with you? You want to say that you're with the Rabbi Nishon. Do you want to be with the Rabbi Nishon when it's cold outside and you got to get up early in the morning and you got to get out and go to shul? Sometimes you don't, you're not ready. You, know, you say, you know, I'd rather stay in bed. Do you want to be with the Rabbi Nishalaylam 
the Rav gets up and he gives a drasha, and he says that everybody should be mechazik themselves in learning Torah. You have to learn Torah. Go to a daf yomishir. I'm not ready to go to a daf yomishir. It's hard to go to a daf yomishir. Okay, what happened? Kiata imadi. So kiati imadi is two way. You have to be ready to be with the rabbi shalom. You also have to be somebody that the rabbi shalom wants to be with. Now, if we just stop there, it sounds like I'm being very harsh. The person says to himself, Rabbi, why he said that I have to make myself a person that the Rabbi Shalom wants to be with. Mm. What does that mean? Listen, I know myself. I do slip up. I do say Lashon Hara every now and then. I try to work on it, but I can't say I don't speak Lashon Hara. I can't say that there aren't other things that I do wrong. So, I don't know. Maybe the Rabbi Shalom Taka doesn't want to be with me. Now you tell me I should have a moon and betachem, but you just told me, Rabbi Weiss, that maybe the Rabbi Hashem doesn't want to be with me. So I think you have to have a better understanding of what a person has to be to be able to fall into the rubric of kiato imodi. And I think we could get a hint to that over here. Where did I see it? Oh, a beautiful radak. A beautiful radak. And it's a radak, like so many other words of the Rishonim. You should know that Klozenberger Rebbe, Zechit Tzadik Levracha, used to say that the words of the Rishonim were written with Ruch HaKodesh, and they were written by Hashpaz HaKomus. Hashpaz HaKomus, literally, it's one of those words in Hebrew that are very, very difficult to define into English. But Hashpaz HaKomus means with the influence of the quill. And what that means, the Klauselberger Rebbe described, is that the Rishonim, they took the quill, they held the pen over the paper, and with their Ruach HaKadosh, the words that came out of the quill and went onto the paper were written thoroughly with Ruach HaKadosh. Every word was influenced Mina Shamayim. Ruach HaKadosh wrote those words. So when we read the words of the Rishonim, we're not reading words like you read my notebook. My notebook, I wrote my notebook. Maybe you'll understand it, maybe you won't. You can't necessarily take my notebook and start looking at it and trying to figure out the deeper, more profound meaning. But the words of the Rishonim, every word of a Rishon is Ruch HaKadosh. And sometimes we read the words of the Rishonim and we read them quickly and we think we know what they say until we dig a little bit deeper. There's a Radak over here. The Radak says, Ki ato imodi. David HaMelech says, I'm not fearful because you are with me, says the Radak. Ki batachti, because I have confidence, Sha'ato imodi, that you are with me. Now, so far, the Radak doesn't seem to have added much to our understanding of the Pasuk. So the Pasuk says, I'm not fearful, Ki ato imodi, because you're with me. Ki batachti, Sha'ato imodi, I trust that you're with me. Continues the Radak. Kemai sha'ata im kol dar shecha. The same way you, the Rabbi Nishalaylam, are with anybody who searches out for you. You see, what the Radak is coming to make sure we understand is that we could read this Pasuk and we could say, Davar HaMelech could say, I don't feel fear any ra ki ato imadi because you are with me. But that's David Amelech. David Amelech could look at the Rabbi Nishalalam and say ki ato imadi, that you're with me. But I can't look at the Rabbi Nishalalam and say loi ra ki ato imadi. How do I know that the Rabbi Nishalalam is with me? Who am I? Who's a, 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 a person that the, that the Rabbi Nishalalam should go ahead and pay attention to him and remember him. David HaMelech, David HaMelech is David HaMelech. But I'm not David HaMelech. To avoid that question and to head off that question, the Radak says, Kemoi Sha'ata Im Kol Shecha. The Rabbi Nishalaylam is with Anybody who is doyresh oisai, the word doyresh means to search him out. 
If you're Dirish the Rabbi Nishalelem, if you search out the Rabbi Nishalelem, we have another passage, David HaMelech says in Tehillim, in Kapitel Lamed Gimel, Hine Ein Hashem El Yereyev, the eyes, Kaviachal, of the Rabbi Nishalelem, are focused on those who fear him, Lamayachalim Lechastai, to those who await his kindness. That's what it means to be Dirish the Rabbi Nishalelem. Somebody who awaits the Rabbi Nishalelem's kindness. He's always looking towards the Rabbi Nishalelem. He's Dirish the Rabbi Nishalelem. In that case, he ain't Hashem El Yereyev. There's another Pasuk in Tehillim. Um, the Pasuk is escaping me right now. It says, we have more psukim that use the same type of language. If you're Dirish the Rabbi Nishalaylam, then the Rabbi Nishalaylam is with you. So this Pasuk, Lo'i Rara Kiyata Imadi, it doesn't only go on a Davin HaMelech. It goes on imperfect people as well. Not only that, but I think I would also say that I think I would also say that we could see what it means. Maybe, as I lost my train of thought there for a moment, you know, it says that when Nadav and Avihu died, if we remember in Parshas Chukas, it says, uh, not Chukas, I'm sorry. Nadav and Avihu, Nadav and Avihu. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Nadav and Avihu. Nadav and Avihu, they brought Keteris on the Mizbeach when they weren't supposed to. And Vatetzei Eish Milufnei Hashem, a fire came out from before Hashem, a toichalai sam vayamusu, it consumed them and they died. So the two elder sons of Aaron, Akayan, died. And then it says, Vayemir Moshe al Aaron, Moshe said to Aaron, Hu asher diber Hashem lemar, this is what Hashem said, Bekroivai ekodesh with those who are close to me, Bikroivai, Rashi says, Bikroivai Bibichirai, with my chosen people, with the best, with the cream of the crop, Bikroivai Ekadesh, my name, there'll be a Kiddushem Shamayim, my name is sanctified, Bikroivai. When the Rabbi Nishalayim, Rashi says, Kisha Akadish Baruch Hu Aisadin Batsadikim, when the Rabbi Nishalayim judges the tzaddikim, when he judges the righteous and he finds them wanting and he punishes them, that's when there's a kid is shame shamayim. What does that mean? I think one of the things that that means is that sometimes it's very critical for the Torah HaKadoshah to show us that everybody has imperfections. None of us are perfect. The best of the best weren't perfect. Davan HaMelech also was not perfect. The Rabbani Yishalayim took Davan HaMelech to task for the mice of Basheva. Davan HaMelech was also on his level imperfect. Moshe Rabbeinu was taken to task for the mice of the Meimariva when he hit the rock and he wasn't supposed to. Chazal tell us that we can't say that they did chatoim. We can't even begin to, to comprehend what they did that was really wrong. But on their level, it was an imperfection. So the Tarak Daisha wants to show us we're imperfect, they were imperfect. Davan Amalek could say, Lo ira ra ki ato imadi. We could also say, Lo ira ra ki ato imadi, despite our imperfections. 
But the question is, like the Radak says, do you fall into the category of Darshecha? Do you search out the Rabbeinu Shalalem? Do you want Imadi? That's the question. The question is not, are you a Dovin HaMelech? The question is not, are you a Moshe Rabbeinu? The question is you, on your level, with your imperfections, are you a Darshecha? Do you search out the Rabbeinu Shalalem? Do you want to be close to the Rabbeinu Shalalem? Is that your Shi'ifa? Is that your desire? Is that where you want to go in life? Is that what you're striving to? Or, chas v'chalila, are you saying, no, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> to, there's a, there's a name of a book that I once heard in the tape, somebody who was giving a shir on chinuch, on, on raising children. He was saying about teenagers nowadays. So he quoted the name of the book where the daughter says to the parents, mom and dad, uh, how does it go? Um, um, uh, mom and dad, get out of my life. Could you take me to the mall? You know, it, is it, I want the Rabbeinu Shalom to protect me when I want protection. But Rabbeinu Shalom, please don't pay too much attention to me right now, because right now I'm really, I, I want to do what I want to do. I'm not interested in the strictures of halacha right now. So if you don't mind, please turn a blind eye right now. Or this section of my life, I don't want the Rabbeinu Shalom in this section of my life. You're going to tell me that the Rabbeinu Shalom is in my office when I'm doing business? Listen, I don't want the Rabbani Shalom paying attention to this business deal right now. He might not like it so much. So you know what? Maybe Rabbani Shalom stay out of my office. That's one of the reasons why we make the point of saying in Davening that the Rabbani Shalom is Malay Chala Aretz Kivaydai, that the entire world is full of the covet of the Rabbani Shalom. There is no place we are out of sight of the Rabbani Shalom. There is no Rabbani Shalom, don't pay attention to me now, but pay attention to me then. And I'll show you a very good example of this in the Chumash, in Parshas that we learned not all that long ago. I think you could learn this lesson very well from Light. I think that ultimately this was Light's problem. We know that Light left Avram Avinu. He left Avram Avinu and he went to Sedoi. It didn't work out well for him. He went to Sedaim. He was captured by the, first he was captured by the armies of Kedar Laimer. Avram Avinu had to come save him. You would think maybe Light would have learned his lesson from that, but no. He went right back to Sedaim. He remained in Sedaim. And then when Sedaim was ultimately destroyed, the Malachim came in the schus of Avram Avinu. The Malachim came and they pulled him out of Sedaim. And they told him, let me find the Pasuk here, and the Malachim told him that he should go run to Avram Avinu. They told him, when the Malachim took him and his family out of Sedaim, mm -hmm. They told him, escape, run for your life. Don't look behind, don't look back. Don't look behind you. Rashi says, they told him, don't look back because you were a Russia together with them. You deserve the same punishment that they're getting, but you're being saved in the schus of Avram Avinu. Don't stay anywhere. In this area, what should you do? Where should you go? Hahara Himalayt, escape to the mountain, Penti Safa, lest you be consumed together with the cities of Sedaim. Rashi says that the Malachim said, Hahara Himalayt, escape to the mountains. Says Rashi, Eitzel Avram Barach, go run to Avram Avinu, run for your life, go back to Avram Avinu. You made a terrible mistake. You left Avram Avinu. And since the time you left Avram Avinu, you've been having trouble. Go run back to Avram Avinu, Shehu Yeshev Bahar, who lives in the mountains. That's what they meant when they said, Hahara Himalayt. 
But what did Light do? Light refused to go back to Avram Avinu. Instead, Light said to the Malachim, I cannot go run to the mountain. I can't run to Avram Avinu. Why? Because if I do, the Ra, evil, will come to me and I will die. Rashi says, what was Light saying? Light said, I can't run to Avram Avinu. You know why? When I was together with the people of Sadaim, the Rabbani Shalom saw my actions and the actions of the people in Sadaim. And in comparison to the people of Sadaim, I looked like a tzaddik. And I seemed to be worthy of being saved. But when I go to Avram Avinu to a tzaddik, Ani Russia. Now I look like a Russian. So what did Light say? Light said, I can't go to Avram Avinu because when I go to Avram Avinu, my imperfections are glaring and I have no intent of fixing my imperfections. I'm not going to fix them. So I can't go to Avram Avinu. If I go to Av- Avram Avinu, I look like a Russia, and then I don't stand a chance. Then pented Bakani Harav Amati. But the Malachim were telling Light, you're making a terrible mistake. Hahara Himalait. Go take all of your imperfections and go to Avram Avinu. And don't go to Avram Avinu just to be living with Avram Avinu. Go to Avram Avinu with a mindset that I'm going to look at Avram Avinu and I'm going to learn from him. Go be a Talmud by Avram Avinu. Now, as a Talmud by Avram Avinu, you're not going to become Avram Avinu in a day. You're not going to become Avram Avinu in a week. You're not going to become Avram Avinu in a year. And you probably won't become Avram Avinu in the rest of your life. But by going to Avram Avinu with the mindset to go be a Talmud and to go learn from Avram Avinu, that already means that you're a Doresh. And if you're a Doresh, if you're a mevakesh, if you're seeking the Rabbi Shalom, if you're working to grow, if your mindset is that I want to be a tzaddik, if your mindset is I want to become a tzaddik, I want to become close to the Rabbi Shalom, I want to live a thoroughly tzaddik life. Yes, I make mistakes. Yes, I'm not there yet. Yes, I fall prey to temptation. But where is my heart and where is my mind and what am I striving for? And what are my she'ifas, my she'ifas, my desires and my goals are that I'm a mevakesh. If you're a mevakesh, then the Radak says, you could say, you could say, I'm confident that you're with me. Like you are with everybody who searches for you. And that's why, Rabbi Sai, we have a right to say this Pasuk. We have a right to say, if that is our mindset. If our mindset is that we want to grow, we understand that we have imperfections. We understand that we need to grow. We understand that there are parts of us that are not very pretty. We understand that we, that we have to better ourselves, but we want to, and we seek to, and we're trying to. Then we are darshecha, then we're mevakshim, and we have a right to say, la'irara ki ato imadi. We don't have to fear, because then the Rabbani Shalom is with us. Now, if we turn to Pasuk Hay, David HaMelech says, Ta'areich lefanai shulchan. Ta'areich lefanai shulchan. David HaMelech says to the Rabbi Shalom, you will set a table. You'll prepare a table for me, neged tzairerai, in the presence of my adversaries. What's David HaMelech saying? David HaMelech is saying, 
you take care of me to the extent that I am confident that you're going to set a table, like the Bitsuda says, with delicacies, to go enjoy them. I'm going to be so victorious that you're you're going to make a banquet for me. Neged in the presence of my enemies. Why does David Amelech focus on Neged Sayurai? That the Rabbi Shalom will do this in the presence of his enemies. The Radak says, Sheyiru Bichvaidi, my enemies will see the honor that befalls me. And they will be so jealous that they will wither, they will rot. So it's kind of like, haha, the Rabbi Shalom is going to set a victorious banquet for me, and you're going to sit there and watch, and you're going to grind your teeth by seeing how successful I am. Okay. The... Um, I saw somebody else who says similar. A few of the Mepharshim say over here that it's going to be neged sayurai. Why, why is that so critical? Why is it so important to mention that the Rabbi Nishalayim is going to do this? The Malbub says, My enemies won't be able to prevent it from happening. Who cares? What's the difference if the enemies see it or they don't? I think that we have to take this Pasuk to the next level, which is Tarek Lefanai Shulcha Neged If somebody could learn the lessons of this capital, if somebody could learn the lessons of Gam Kielech Begeit Salmaves Loi Ira Ra Ki Ata Imadi, if somebody could learn the lessons of what we saw earlier in this capital, Nafshi Yeshoive Yanchein Yivamagle Tzedek Laman Shemai, that I understand that all of the twists and turns and challenges and tribulations of life are all guided by the Rabbi Nishalaylam, and they're all maglei tzedek. They're all paths that are 100% just and 100% for my benefit. If somebody could learn all these lessons, then he could say, Tarek lefanai shulchan neged sayurai. Even in the presence of my enemies, even if my enemies are not yet vanquished, even if my enemies are there and they are still powerful, they still hold sway over me. Even in the presence of life's challenges, while they're still challenging, before they've been resolved, still, I realize that the Rabbi Shalalim is setting a table for me. I might be suffering through a challenge, but while I'm suffering through the challenge, Tarech Lefanai Shulcham, the Rabbi Nishalaylam is in the midst of preparing a banquet for me. That's the level to which I recognize that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is taking care of me. Now, the next words in the Pasuk, Dishanta Bashem and Roishi. Dishanta, I'm not sure how to translate it in English. The Mitsuda says it comes from the Lashon of Dashain Vishamein. It means fat and rich. Dishanta, maybe the word would be enriched. I wonder what, what um, just looking here in the in Roshamshin Rafal Hirsch's uh, Tehillim, which is he must have written it in, in German. This is uh, translated into English. Uh, they use the words anointed. I think I like enriched better based on the Mitsudas. The Shant of Hashem and Roshi. You have an Ezra. You have an Ezra doesn't, I don't see that he translates the how about the Targum. Patimaya Gushmi. Fattened. I'm going to use, I'm going to stick right now with the word enriched. Tishanta Hashem and Roshi. You enriched with oil my head. 
There's a pasuk in Sher Hashirim. The pasuk says in Sher Hashirim, right in the beginning, L'reach Shemanecha Toivim, by the scent of your wonderful oils, Lashed Rabim, Shemanecha Toivim, plural, your wonderful oils, Shemen Turak Shemecha. Your name is the one who possesses flowing oil. Al Kain Alamais Ahivucha. Based on that, the nations have loved you. The Chazal say that the oil that's being referred to in this pasuk, Lareach Shemanecha Tarivim, the the scent of your wonderful oil is Teresh Abiksav and Teresh Abalpeh. We know that the Torah that we have is comprised of two parts. There's the Teresh Abiksav, the written Torah, the Chumash, the Navi, the Ksuvim. That's the part of Torah that was always allowed to be written down. Then there's Teresh Abalpeh, the Torah that was intended to be handed down generation to generation by heart. It wasn't supposed to be written down. That's the explanation of the Teresh Abiksav. That's Mishnayis, Gemara, Rishonim, Achreinim. Everything that we have outside of Tanakh, that's Teresh Abalpeh. That's the L'reach Shmanecha Toivim. That's what we refer to in Shir Hashirim when we say that the Rabbi Shalom has this wonderfully scented oil. David HaMelech says, Di shanta v'ashemen roishi. You enriched me with shemen. You gave me a Torah hakdosha. I don't see this pirish here on the page in the Mepharshim that we find here in the Mekros Gedolos Tehillim. I didn't see this brought down anywhere, but this is how I would like to suggest Shot and the Pasuk can be learned. The Shanta Vashem and Roshi. If you want to reach the levels that David Amalek is discussing in this capital, the only way you can do it is through the Shaman of Torah. And Al Pidrush, I would like to suggest that the beginning of the Pasuk is referring to the Torah Hakdosha as well. Taroich Lefanai Shulchan. You have set for me a table. The Shulchan Aruch. That's the body of Halacha, the Iker work of Halacha that we have. The Shulchan Aruch. Why is it called Shulchan Aruch? It's called Shulchan Aruch because it's a set table. We find that Lashen in the beginning of Parshas Mishpatim. The Rabbani Shalom tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Ve'elaha Mishpatim, these are the laws, Asher Tassim Lifnehem, that you should place before Klal Yisrael. Rashi says, what does this mean? Asher Tassim Lifnehem. One of the first times I ever spoke in public, I had a Rebbe in fifth grade, Rabbi Geldworth, the Chreinel of Racha. His son was a famous Rebbe in Taratimima for many years, and a Rav. Rav Lippa Geldworth, I had his father as a Rebbe. I forget his father's first name. I wasn't on first name basis with my Rebbe. Rabbi Geldworth, he put me on the radio to say a Dvar Torah on the radio in one of the Yiddish, on, on one of the Yiddish radio stations. One of the few times in my life that I actually spoke in Yiddish. I always say that the most in the, the, the most intimidating uh, speaking engagement I ever had was when I was maspid, a Dayan that I was close with, a Dayan in Williamsburg, Rashia Herschel Valhandler, Zechet Tzadik Levracha. I was maspid him on Division Avenue late at night, Matzi Shabbos, in front of a thousand chsidim. And they called me up to be maspid. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? If I try to be maspid him in Yiddish, it's not going to be Kavad Ames. 
even if I could manage to say a few words of Hesped in Yiddish in a clear way, I'm not going to be able to express my thoughts well in Yiddish. So I made the decision that I'm going to be Maspid in English. So I'm Maspid in English on Division Avenue in front of a thousand Hasidim in English. But it was good. I think it was a big covenant amaze. But when I was in fifth grade, I spoke in Yiddish on the radio. So I remember I spoke on this Pasuk. And I said, These are the laws that you should place in front of them. And I asked, Mishpatim de we, we think about Mishpatim and we clear about Mishpatim. Mishpatim Lertman, we learn Mishpatim. Avravas meant Mishpatim asher tosim lifnehem. What does it mean, Mishpatim laws that we place before them? So Rashi answers this. And Rashi says, Amalai HaKadosh Baruch Hu LeMoshe, the Rabbi Nisham told Moshe Rabbeinu, it should not pass on your mind to say, I will teach them the halacha two or three times, until it is arranged and ordered in their mouths, like a Mishnah, something that they know by heart that they could rattle off. And I'm not going to trouble myself, lahavinam, in order to make them understand time adavar, the rationale for all the halachas and the deeper meanings of the halachas of pirushay and their explanations. Moshe Rabbeinu might have thought I could get off easy. Lakach nemar. Therefore, the Rabbeinu Shalalam said, Asher tosim lufneim. You have to place the halachas before them, kishulchan ha'aruch, like a set table. When you invite somebody to a fancy dinner, you don't go ahead and put down piles of spoons and forks and big plates and small plates in the middle of the table and put out a banquet. You know, years ago, we used to go away. My father used to take us away uh, for Pesach to a hotel. I understand that nowadays it's a lost art. In those days, they used to serve breakfast in the hotel with waiters. You had waiter service. Nowadays, they tell me that the hotels do banquets. My father, Rishon, used to call it the cow tunnel. Everybody lines up over there like the cows that are in the farm, and they're lining up to go to the feeding trough. That's what my father used to call the, the, um, the uh, what do they call it, the, the schmorg. You get on the cow tunnel to go get your food. So when you make a fancy banquet, you set a table, and a person sits down, and when the table is set properly, the utensils that you need first are closer to your plate. The utensils that you're going to need later are further away from your plate. You have the small plate for the appetizer. You have the bowl for the soup. You have the large plate for the entree. You have the dessert bowl for the dessert. Everything that you need is laid out before you. The food is brought to you in a proper order and in a proper seder. You have a wine glass for wine and you have a larger glass for your drinks. Everything is laid out and prepared. David HaMelech says, shulchan. The Rabbeinu Shalom set for us a table. The Rabbeinu Shalom gave us a Torah HaKadosha. And the Torah HaKadosha is a beautiful set table. It has aspects to it and elements to it and sections to it that are there to guide every part of our life. Somebody sent me last week an email, a link to a video. He wanted to show me something, a video that he found very profound. It was a video that was uh, trying to tell you how you should learn and how you should study the things that you have learned in order to remember them, how you should review them. And this non-Jew, was giving a whole lecture about how you need to learn something and then you need to review it and then you need to allow time to pass by before you review it again. And that's the way you're going to remember what you learned. And I said, I don't understand. Why do I need this non-Jewish fellow to teach me this? This is a Rashi. We have a Rashi. 
right away in the beginning of Vayikra. Rashi says, Yochal af lahafsakais. Rashi says, Umahayu hafsakais mishamshais. Why do we have stum, psuchais and stumais in the Torah? In a Sefer Torah, if you open up a Sefer Torah, you'll see that between different passages in the Sefer Torah, there are gaps. You'll have several psukim in a row. Wherever you look in the Chumash and you see a samach between the psukim or a pei between the psukim, that means that there's a gap in the Sefer Torah. That means that at that point, the Rabbeinu Shalalem gave Moshe Rabbeinu a break. The Rabbeinu Shalalem taught Moshe Rabbeinu a passage of the Torah, and then he gave him a break. Rashi says, what were the breaks for? Litain revach le to give time to Moshe, lehisbainen, to think, bein parsha le parsha, ubein inyan le inyan, between one passage and another, and between one topic and another. Kal v'chaim lehedyet halaymet minahedyet, if Moshe Rabbeinu needed breaks to understand his learning properly. When he was learning from the Barei Olam, when he was learning from the Rabbeinu Shalalem, the best teacher possible, certainly when a normal person learns, he needs breaks to be able to think about what he learned. So we know this. The Torah is a set table. Everything that you need to know, everything that you need to know about how to comport yourself in any situation in life, under any circumstances, how to eat, how to sleep, how to wake up in the morning. The Torah gives you a way to wake up in the morning. The muscle that I always use is a non-Jew could wake up in the morning, and if at night when he went to sleep the night before, he was in the middle of eating a piece of cheesecake, and he has a half-eaten piece of cheesecake on his, on his night table, he could wake up in the morning with dirty hands and undressed and everything else, and with a mouth full of schmutz and saliva and everything else, he could wake up, roll over, see the cheesecake, and start eating cheesecake. Is that a mensch? Is that dignified? Or is that closer to what you would see in the Bronze Zoo? But we, the Terah Doshu, gave us a way to wake up in the morning. We wake up in the morning, and we know that the first thing we have to do is we have to go, and we have to wash. We have to, we have to wash Natilus Yadayim. We have to cleanse ourselves. We have to take care of our bodily functions. We have to wash our face. We have to get dressed. So the, the, the Torah Kedosh, it gives us a way to wake up. It gives us a way to go to sleep. It gives us a way to eat. It's not only a way to prepare matzah and eat matzah or to build a sukkah and how to eat in the sukkah. The Torah Kedosh is a set table that gives us a beautiful life. And it's Dishanta Bashem and Roshi. You enriched me with this shemen, with the wonderful oil of the Torah HaKadosha, Kaisi Ravaya, so that my cup overfloweth. And it's all neged tzairai. You want to know what makes me victorious in the face of all of my enemies? You want to know what makes me victorious and what gives me a tukuma, what gives me standing in the face of all of the challenges and all the trials and tribulations of life? You know what makes me say like Ira Ra Ki Ata Imadi. You know want to know what makes me say Nafshi Yeshayi Veb Yanchein Ivam Aglet Sedek. It's all the Shanta Vashem and Roshi. Taroich Lefan Aishulcha Neged Tzayroi. The Shanta Vashem and Roshi. The Rabbi Shalom enriched me with a Torah Hakdosh. He gave me a Torah Dika life. He gave me mitzvahs. He gave me something that I can use to become close to him. He gave me something that turns me into an elevated Bria, something that makes me better than the rest of the animal kingdom. And that's a Torah HaKadoshah. And finally, David HaMelech closes off. Based on this, David HaMelech says, I could say with confidence that Toiv, goodness, Bachesed, and kindness your defuni kalyamechayai will chase me for all the days of my life. Like the Sephardna says, your defuni, it will chase me. Built the hishtad lusi without me even working to go attain the goodness and the kindness. If I live this kind of life, a life of Torah, a life of Amuna, a life of Betachen, then David Amela says, the goodness and the kindness will chase me. Kalyamechayai. Veshavti bevei Hashem la'ayruch yamim. 
and I will be able to sit in the house of Hashem la'orich yamim for lengthy days. Mir Hashem, that's what we should be zeichet to, like we say in davening during the yamim neiroim when we say ledavid at the end of davening. Acha shalti meis Hashem. There's one thing that I ask of the Rabbi Nishalaylam, Shifti Beveis Hashem Kol Yemei Chayai, I should be zoichet to sit in the house of Hashem. What does that mean to sit in the house of Hashem? That that's what my life should be. My life should be in the house of Hashem. My life should be in the Dalai Lama's of Halacha, of Mitzvahs. That's what my life should be. My life shouldn't be out in the street. It should be Veshafti Beveis Hashem Kol Yemei Chayai. That's what we should be zoichet to. The Rabbi Nishalayim, should be Megan and Gantz Klai Yisrael. The Rabbi Nisham should send Yeshuas and Refuas to everyone in need. The Rabbi Nisham should take care of Klai Yisrael B'chamaka and Shehem. We should only hear of Simchas and Besuras Tavis. We shouldn't hear any more of any kind of Tsaris and any kind of troubles. And the Rabbi Nisham should bring the Biyaskar Tzedek B'meher and we should be Zaychet to see it soon.